Hi there everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are all night. Um, just checking out this, uh, this mob here. I made a video, uh, this is the, um, they seem to have updated their website. It looks, in the past you had a lot of private companies building railways and, you know, all that kind of stuff and it did sort of really help create communities and were the backbone of the communities. So let's have a look at this again. So when there was a change of 2018, the, this man revived the talks of these high-speed rail proposals for Australia with a focus on private sector proposals and value capture funding models. In March 2016, the government received an unsolicited personal proposal from a group called the in Melbourne. Rather than servicing existing population centres, the proposal centred on creating eight new inland cities and of both cities and railways to be funded by land sales. Clara claimed to have already said for the cities. In April 2017, Spanish rolling stock manufacturer Telgo presented an unsolicited proposal to the New South Wales government in which it was proposed to utilise passively tilting diesel rolling stock capable of speeds of up to 200 kilometres an hour to increase speeds on the Sydney Canberra line in track. Talgo claimed a travel time as long as two and a half, two to two and a half hours could be achieved. The manufacturer offered to bring a Talgo to New South Wales for testing at no cost. In May, in the May uh, 2017, the Government announced 20 million in fund territory provide, um, matching that from up to three business casings focusing on delivering high speed rail links between capital cities and regional Australia. Some missions will be a priority of infrastructure Australia, with funds to be allocated to the successful proponents. Further funding would be considered following completion of the business cases. Okay, so it did move forward, but there were a few incidents where you sort of question what's going on. Okay, so the plan is to... Okay, why do we need this plan? Okay, cities are home to more than half of the world's population and they expect to add another 2.5 billion new residents by 2015. They face increasing environmental pressures and infrastructure needs and growing demands from residents to deliver a better quality of life to do so at a sustainable cost. Australia's growth is equivalent to introducing a new city in the size of Canberra every year for the next 30 years. Australia's population is growing and is growing at pace. Today, Australia's home population is 25.7 million. By 2048, the population will grow to 40 million. This is a further 14.3 million people needing a home over the next 28 years. So, how do we manage population growth and urbanisation? As we look into the future and the way the world's population will grow, we see that we're moving to a more urbanised environment. With this shift to urbanisation, we as a global community have to make a choice. Do we, one, continue to accommodate growth and urbanisation using suburban sprawl, which adds travel times, lack of affordable housing, congestion and overcrowding, or two, look to grow and develop more livable, sustainable, connected, smart cities. Uh, has a vision for general change the way Australia and the world continues with the urbanisation. Okay, so that's just the overview. Now, the Melbourne to the Greater Shepparton. The, the plans to build the world's most livable, sustainable and connected cities in Victoria and New South Wales connect them by world-class high-speed rail. Okay, so we've got Melbourne to the Greater Shepparton. With Sage in Victoria is to build two new, uh, connected by world class high speed rail to Melbourne CVD in 30 minutes. The consortium have been working on the Melbourne to create a ship and faster rail strategic business cases under the federal government's faster rail initiative. The strategic business case explores the benefits and the feasibility of establishing two new Clara smart cities in a regional Victoria connecting to Melbourne by world class high speed rail. It investigates a new way to manage and house Australia's growing population. And they have done this. I think they got 8 million if I'm correct. Sydney to Canberra. 
The first stage in New South Wales involves, up to three new cities in between Sydney and Canberra, connected by a world-class high speed rail. Currently, it's consulting its work in New South Wales. Both Sydney and Canberra are feeling the strain of growing population with the scarcity of land, adding to the challenge. By building a new smart city on a high speed rail line between Sydney and Canberra, it will accommodate this, some of this growth and provide a journey time between the cities of less than one hour. Proceeds of the future land sales to fund the cost of establishing new smart cities and high-speed rail. This approach shifts away from the traditional funding models. What is value cre creation and value capture? Value creation is the use of proceeds from the uplift in value that of land that comes from transport and other infrastructure being built nearby. Value capture allows for part of the land value uplift to partly or wholly fund physical and social infrastructure. Governments have traditionally used many forms of taxes, charges, duties, levies, and private con contributions, contributions to capture value. The Clara case, we are creating value and then capturing that value to offset the capital costs of the high speed rail and upfront infrastructure of the new smart cities. So, as a revenue raising department, value capture has been existing for a considerable period of time. However, economics has been more, become more sophisticated over recent times. As a common more complex and the funding gaps of the, for the infrastructure cause untainted consequences for both the economy broadly and the form and the shape of our cities, investigating better methods of funding and infrastructure focus. This is universal recognition across government and industry that well-planned investments in transport infrastructure increase surrounding property values and tax revenues. Research shows that in these instances are great where transport was teamed with integrated land use transport planning. Opportunities and benefits to, of this model. The smart cities integrated landing links transport and land development investment decisions, increases the accessibility to transport, reduces private vehicle travel, makes better use of infrastructure and urban land, and ultimately improves the quality of life for the residents' workers within the smart city, implementing a value creation and capturing a plan. To implement a successful value creation and a value plan, it involves a number of factors. Long-term strategic and infrastructure planning linked to adequate and reliable funding sources, appropriate general zoning and development controls on land and infrastructure corridors, and consistent, coordinated and supported private policies, guidelines, and proceeds that enable public and private sector holders to invest with confidence. The funding model will look beyond traditional funding and financing models commonly used in large-scale infrastructure projects. This does not include preclude government involvement, but does provide flexibility and the potential to reduce dependency and burden solely into a government hands. The modelling demonstrates the value creation and capture from progress and build out of the plan is adequate to fund the project. The implementation to respond. Canberra is a great example of a new city being built in regional Australia and becoming a very desirable place to live. So much so, Canberra is now represented as one of the most livable cities in the world. Unlike previous proposals for high speed and rail, which have relied heavily on government funding, these proposals uh, use proceeds of future land sales to fund the cost of establishing new smart cities to high speed rail. So it's just public uh, requirements, a minimum. Okay, so what I was wanting to share that I found out about the public funding, I'll show you shortly, is that some of these fundings went to ex-ministers, new venture capitals. Energy. To be smart, is to value natural resources so that a minimum 
how a city utilizes an off-grid mentality when it comes to managing energy. It has a focus on renewable generation, storage and sustainability. This will supportable energy provisions for residents and businesses, powering a smart city. It has investments, potential energy solutions and technologies that could be adopted into a smart city. Some of these energy sources that could be included are solar, floating solar, waste energy, hydrogen, wind. Stored energy would be used to provide peak demand support battery Batteries deployed across the city would also provide stabilisation, demand support and network redundancy. Energy stored technology continues to evolve, offering the to potential to meet the peak power demand of a city using renewable sources, achieving a level of sustainability. It's the sustainable sustainability, its energy is undertaking a green hydrogen project to bring dispatchable renewable energy to a market at scale. To achieve a level of self-sustainability, the, the city will need to deploy a range of smart energy measures, including smart energy options such as control occupancy level detection and automation of HAV systems with the use of LED and smart lighting solutions, building design standards and facilitating planning and guidelines, demand side management and load shift to smooth out the load demand profiles, integration distance of dis district level energy management systems, whole of neighborhood chilling heating solutions, maximizations of integration and of, of all available renewable energy solutions, waste management including incineration and conversion into electricity and heating solutions. In all of this moved by, uh, I think it might be like an, the way, way to explain it would be a pneumatic system um, where air would push the rubbish through sh they would have all of these vehicles. But when you add water to an urban environment, the Liberty Index skyrockets. Um, it has created an integrated water part that will max as well. So their integrated water plan capture as much water as possible. Recreational water facilities, a recreational lake that can offer rowing, sailing, waterfront, swimming pools, and boardwalks, a canal network running throughout the city, which adds a residential amity at urban beach. Water is a precious resource in Australia and around the world. As a society, we must be really smart about how we use and manage water. Um, Clara has thought a lot. Of a highly livable and sustainable and connected city is having trans and connected, efficient, available and smart transport modes that are built for people. Uh, Clara has designed a number of transport modes for Clara Smart City, AIM Network, Mobility as a Service, Logistics Network and High Speed Rail. Clara can be a First city in Australia to implement a new mobility. Well, this is a unique opportunity to be part of a key dispute to the Australian sector. Active transport network and active transport models, which include walking, cycling, will be prioritised in a, in the smart city to promote a healthy and safe, safe and affordable communities. Active transport opens up the opportunity to adopt more informal urban designs out of the constraints of needing to provide formal street network for cars. This has the potential to enable a different urban design approach with activated laneways and usual building forms. Providing walk and cycling friendly streets has the benefits of increasing healthy activity and reduced noise, creating a lively, lively active places where people want to be and are encouraged to be outside the home. This can be physically active and fit community with associated environment benefits, fewer cars on the road, Increased activity also contributes to core business and stimulation of the local comedy and productivity. <clears throat> Tractorless tram network, tram network. Public transport infrastructure in a smart city must be able to adapt future advances in tra transport systems. Transport systems that have lightweight infrastructure requirements should be prioritized over the more traditional systems. Based on this, the smart city would implement a trackless tram system. This would be a high-frequency trackless tram network that would be the main form of an intercity transport. The resident would be approximately 300 metres from a tram, allowing easy access to all they need. As we see in cities in Australia and around the world, tram networks add to the social fabric of the street streets. So they add to the fabric of the social streetscape. Now I've shown these trackless trams before in Sydney and Perth. There are also smart cities in Noosa, Queensland, 
There's a, one in Darwin, Northern Territory. There's one in South Australia and Western Australia. And I think there's a few in Victoria. Two in Victoria. So they are around. They have been pra- like practicing and trying the technology. Um, mobility as servers. Maz take, provides the opportunity to move away from the need of private car ownership, therefore reducing the cost of living while improving the accessibility and connectivity. It's designed with people in mind. Rather than investing in motor vehicles that sits in the garage 90% of the time, the smart city will instead provide an app-based Maz system which will provide a vehicle on demand to take it, our users to the distance. Maz delivers for... Clara's global sustainability in cities around the world today. Cars sit in their parking garages 90 to 96% of the time. A city of 400,000 people would usually contain approximately 230,000 cars. A Clara Smart City can serve this population with approximately 10 to 20% of these cars. Autonomous vehicles. The proposed inclusion of an autonomous vehicle fleet within the closed network will enable a smart city to lead the introduction of autonomous vehicles. One of the major challenges facing the introduction of autonomous vehicles into public roads is an interaction with human controlled private vehicles. Clara Smithy will only contain autonomous vehicles and leaving a much more controlled. Okay, so you won't own a private car, you can, there'll be just trams driving around and you can rent a car, um, using your smartphone through an app. So the aspiration for the smart facilitator level 4 or 5 automation of the transport network, knowing that the network can also function at level 3 automation within Australia is working towards having a regulatory system in place so more highly automated vehicles can operate on our roads by the early 2020s. It is not known when level 5 vehicles will be deployed in meaningful numbers. They have been using um, road train trucks out in Western Australia in the mines and you know, up in northern Western Australia, up in Dampier Way region and salt mines for a long time. They have no people driving if they run or slowly autonomous. Yeah. So they propose to work with various government stakeholders and industry bodies to ensure the design of the smart city can be best accommodate to this operation of Thomas vehicles at this level or nothing. The proposed timing for the development of the smart city presentation presents an opportunity to lead the way in the broader introduction of the autonomous vehicles. It's important to note that designing new cities removes the complexity of retrofitting road designs for autonomous vehicles, enabling a key designs considerations for the autonomous vehicles to be integrated into early design stages. Now, I can't say that word properly, so I know people are going to pick it up, but I don't care. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and pick about it. There's certain words I can't have, yeah, have some disabilities, so... Logistics network freight requirement within the will be managed using an underground service network, including autonomous vehicles, the AVs. The interaction between freight vehicles and its residents is reduction to a fraction of the typical city of the same size by executing most of the across ground movement via underground tunnels. AVs. It is estimated that the underground network will handle approximately 95% inbound freight. The remaining percentage, which that includes large goods, dangerous goods, and security term items will be surface transport. Providing adequate surface access and transport will be essential during construction. The proposed underground freight network will greatly improve the efficiency of movement of goods to and fro within this Clara Smart City, ensuring a competitive advantage for businesses. What brings a plan like Clara's together is the high speed rail network, high speed rail to overcome the tyranny of distance and change. Conversation as to where people may choose to live. Around places more than just the location of a map, a sense of place is a unique collection of the qualities and characteristics, visual, cultural, social, environmental that provide meaning to a location. So the tr- strategic place ma- making for a Clara Smart City. In a smart city, they must feel it is accessible, interesting, connected, and characterful. What is crucial to achieving this is, is ac- activation. In a nutshell, activation is strategic place making. It has the same aim to facilitate social interactions and improve a community's quality of life as it does placemaking, with the added intent to attract new people, businesses, and investment. Creating an authentic environment place. As soon as people arrive in a smart city, we want them to feel that it's real and authentic place. Activation is an ongoing process that takes time to establish. 
But by the investigative strategic activation, we can accelerate development timelines by attracting more people, more businesses, because we know that both groups want to be in the environment. Like, it's like Noosa, everyone wants to be in Noosa. Clara Smart City will be built for the future rapid growth, and the activation will be vital to establishing key components of vibrant, vibrant urban neighbourhood, including a centre, a discernible centre, whether it's a main street or a public space, population density, enough people for businesses to flatly transit run frequently, mixed income, mixed use, affordable housing located near businesses, parks and public space, plenty of pub, public space gathered to play, landmarks and destinations, places with character and special meaning to local people, pedestrian friendly design, the neighbourhood is compact, filled with fine grain details that connect contribute towards an active urban environment. Okay, WAC. Clara has invested in an automated vacuum waste collection system, which is also known as a pneumatic waste collection. The system transport waste at high speed through the underground vacuum pipes pipelines to a connected station where it is compacted and sealed in containers. When the container is full, it is transported away and emptied. The system helps facilitate the separation and recycling of waste. The AVA systems are suitable for both residential and commercial municipal waste. So you got your buildings, you put your recyclables, your normal rubbish, your green waste. That's what the three is. So you have recyclable green waste, normal rubbish goes in the pipes, comes into the facility. I dare say they probably burn it. Um, the AVA systems have considerable environmental benefit. AVA. CE systems have considerable environmental benefits. System removes waste collection and vehicles from the urban environment, reducing the impact on road networks and traffic, reducing fuel usage, emissions and accidents. The inlets cannot overflow, which avoids unsightly and smelly piles of waste. And these systems have been shown to encourage users to recycle more efficiently. The use of AVAC waste collection systems and new development areas are rising, particularly in Scandinavia and Asia, where so South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong are leading the way in implementing this type of technology. These systems have also been adopted in new development areas in the Middle East. So it is a pretty good idea to do that that way. It takes all those trucks off the street. And if they can that waste and capture, you know, everything and Yeah, it'd be great. Core value of a core value of a compact city is, is its capacity to Capacity to integrate urban policy goals such as economic viability, environmental and sustainability and social equality. Attractive cities consistently regarded as attractive. Copenhagen, Denmark Haven is Denmark's cultural, eco economic and government centre. It is widely regarded as one of the most environmentally friendly cities in the world. What makes Copenhagen attractive? High quality waterfront activities and open spaces, well connected bicycle network, walkable street, distinct urban form, architecture and landmarks. So the Geneva, Switzerland. So these are cities built from transport oriented. They've been trialing these for years, you know. So that's that one. I think that was yeah, that was that one. So this is the highest speed rail up all over Australia. It just goes quiet.